it's not allowed and you can't record. It's like an hour early. Aha, uh -huh, your mic's not muted yet. Alright, I'm gonna go make some pizza. Mother of God, they're duplicating. <laughs> <sighs> How you doing, man? Eh, I'm all right. How about y'all? Uh, well, not the best. Oh yeah? Yeah, I had to uh, had to put down my dog Friday. Oh shit, dude! I'm so sorry. Yeah. So. Are they sick? Yeah, they were. Uh... Yeah, he was 13, so he was he was pretty old. But uh, we think a uh, seizure or. He had a tumor in the brain, one of the two, but it gave him, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, nystagmus, where the eyes shift back and forth rapidly. Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah, he got that for you, man. Yeah, it's pretty shitty, but uh, you know, you expect that when you uh, when you buy the animals, and then you know. Yeah, that's the worst. That's the worst part of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we still out and go buy more. So. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog was it? It was a Australian Shepherd. Oh, yeah. We looked at getting an Australian Shepherd before we got our, our pug. The gotcha. Yeah. Completely, uh, completely opposite side That's of the spectrum. Opposite side of the spectrum. <laughs> 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 it's it's funny not enough. The direction. Yeah, for real. Funny enough when, uh, the, it was so dumb. We um, just before we got married, my wife was really looking into doing um, like showing things, like um, where they do the course, you know, where they run the dog like through the course. Dogs? Oh. Yeah, kind of, kind of. And uh, hold on. Oh shit! I'm being beckoned, and it sounds urgent. I'll be right back. All right, now that the cockroach is dead. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry that your weekend took such a sour turn there. Kishar. Yeah. Bit of a shame, but, uh, you know, yeah. life moves on. Yeah. <sighs> Did, uh, are there any whispers about plutonium and 5e tools right now? I haven't heard anything, um, but I haven't really been paying attention much either. Huh. And I just logged into the Foundry and says, Welcome to Plutonium. We'd like to remind you neither Foundry nor Forge support piracy in any yeah. shape or form. And that all re discussion related to the use of plutonium should be done in our Discord. Hmm. Kind of sounds like maybe someone might be messing someone, with it. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, they're getting uh see what they do right, or at least <laughs> what um what a lot of the uh, yield pirates of the Seven Seas have learned that if they're a platform supporting service those kinds of service, and it's somebody else putting it on their thing, the platform doesn't get in trouble. Because if it's like like so, if plutonium is a plugin to import certain kinds of like data sources, plutonium can't get in trouble if that data source just so happens to be blah 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 blah. But yeah. I think plutonium specifically is <laughs> is just directly porting in everything, regardless of uh, what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, and especially that now they're moving to the more digital stuff. They're uh, probably going to be cracking down a lot more on that stuff. So, ooh, actually, you know what? That might be uh, something we want to consider is to not stream the uh, uh, the game per se, or put this in streamer mode. Where we only stream like part of the part of the screen, because uh, 
Not that, you know, some moderator's gonna come by like, like, look at our shit, but... I mean, is it... Uh, if we're... If we're just make If we're just recording our own game session, we should be fine, right? Uh... I can't think of any reason why they would... If we start... If it... I highly, not that it's gonna happen, but if it makes starts making money, that'll do it. That'll be all they need. Oh to. yeah, yeah. No, I don't think. I mean, as far as I know, Delexi's is a, his his YouTube channel is just a just a normal commoner mm -hmm. YouTube channel that anybody can watch. So, right. Yeah, I'm not sure. The exact legality of the uh, of plutonium, but I would imagine that uh, wizards aren't too happy about it if they know about it. Yeah, because yeah, because plutonium also does homebrew stuff as well. Because I think Five E Tools is. Uh... If anyone would know, it'd be Aaron. Yeah. My boy loves that, that stuff. Yeah, he keeps up with that kind of kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but also provides the import from homebrew repositories, URLs, and file uploads. Yeah, yeah. So, in theory, if we want to keep our, if we want to do like a save point here, import everything that we have access to from Five E Tools. Um, be curious to see if like how actually big it is. I I doubt it's that big. In terms of just data, then we just keep it locally, and then if it does get taken down, we can always uh, just upload they've, it. They've got they've got screenshots of pluton of using plutonium on five on uh, on Forge. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's designed for Forge. Um, my Did they have some kind of they have some kind of leak or something? No, no, I just said whenever I popped up into uh, uh, into the game, it said, like, oh, hey, welcome to Plutonium. We'd like to remind you that neither Foundry nor Forge support piracy in any shape or form. All discussions oh. are related to the... Yeah, it was just in the game. So I'm, I don't... I mean, I could always oh, run yeah, over to Discord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that that's considered piracy. All right, let's see. I don't think, I don't think so. In the In the general word of piracy, you know? Wait a minute. You're a freaking admin on this server. <gasps> Lyra. <laughs> oh, on 5e tools. <laughs> one of the admins is named Lyra. You broke up there. No, I said one of the uh, admins name on 5e tools is Lyra. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, Wizards of the Coast. What are we looking at here? Yeah, because their main issue, I, I would imagine, unless 5e Tools is supported by Wizards of the Coast, would be the new mod, or like any of the modules and stuff like that coming. Would be my, would be my, yeah, my thoughts. Let me go to their announcements. Scroll down. Uh, do 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 do. do. Zero have pulse. they got 5e tools running i mean uh, or that that was going to be a stupid question have they got have they got a tool running for uh one D D yet i mean they don't yeah. have everything yet oh oh, right? oh wizards no they don't have it running yet no i imagine that's... there's swarm over and over what the fuck oh, oh that's, yeah oh that's it's <laughs> like who the bitch is playing medieval shit in my ears i didn't click yeah. no tabs <laughs> <laughs> still working on uh sound here gotcha Get it, Iwick. uh that's a uh, 5 h 10 hp to the <laughs> game master for incorrect name <laughs> 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 my, my other dm he uh he gets my name and another person's name wrong all the time. Like it flip flops. So we've just decided like whenever he gets it wrong, it's like, I'll take that five at 10 HP. Thank you. <laughs> hey man, get it where you can. Right. Right. Okay. Scrolling through the announcements. How's everybody doing? Doing all right. 
Yeah, I'm all right. So it should be stable. Ba, 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 ba. If they're doing one D and D. They're doing UA shit. Okay, so what is what is this? Nothing here. Rules. You looking at the one D and D stuff? No, I'm looking at um five E tools right now, the guys who do plutonium to make sure they're not getting uh, cocked by Wizards of the Coast. But I'm not seeing uh, anything outright saying that they're having issues. You checked their forum yet? Yeah. yeah all the pit messages are fine. Rules of the server. Should probably go ahead and download the whole yeah, you can that's download all of 5e tools. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, that might just be the best. Because uh, that's what they policy. say on their website. They're like, you should download this just in case there were, anything does happen. Well, yeah. they took down. Um, what was it? The um, uh, the trove with all those fucking. Uh, yeah, trove's been down. Chrome's been gone for a while now. Yeah. No, no, keep it really loud. I need to make sure I turn it down <laughs> adequately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you pulling some some good stuff for I uh, Isaac Ezek, whatever the Ezek. fuck his name is? Nope, I'm pulling out stuff for the night. Oh shit! Whew. He's expecting us to to have fun tonight. I guess. All right. Fun's relative, right? Who the fuck is this guy down here? It's just some <laughs> what token is this? David. <laughs> <laughs> he is so very done with our shit. <laughs> Almost reminds me of that meme of the guy who's done with your shit, you know, from like the I think he was at a, like a, a soccer game or a rugby game. Oh my god, yeah, the uh oh fuck. Here, hold let me go see if I can find the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do have to like. I do feel like it's a badge of honor, though, that I was able to piss Nishra off so bad that Nishra started a fight. Oh yeah, yeah. That um, that was certainly... <laughs> that was impressive. I'm curious Nishra's to see. Nishra's still if it, pissed it... off. That's funny. Holy shit, cat! You drove that up the fucking stairs. The fuck? Okay, we can play. She drug her little like a fishing toy thing all the way up the stairs. Wow, she's determined for someone to play very, with her in that fishing toy. Very much so. Um, I'm I am slightly concerned either uh, cuz I, I I would assume Nishra is of the uh good alignment here. Uh uh yeah. Y'all I, y'all, cons- y'all alignments are getting kind of gray area. I don't know what you're talking about. My alignment's been uh, fine this whole time. No, you're right. Correct. <laughs> Get out what's of here. Your line, what's your alignment? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the alignment has been perfectly aligned with his character. Perfectly aligned with my character in the party. You know? Who I, don't, I don't feel like my I've gone too far outside of my alignment. Yeah, I mean, honestly, no, it, it really just depends on the person to like what their alignment means for them. Yeah, because like there's so much gray on the. Uh, yeah, like, as long as no one's playing chaotic neutral, I don't mind. Because like chaotic, neutral, chaotic is neutral. It's the it's the I can literally do anything and it doesn't affect my morality. I don't think I know anyone out oh. there, and if they are, that's truly chaotic evil. Well, so so I've always seen at least the on the evil spectrum. So it was always lawful evil is the. 
the shitty noble who like um ugh, there weren't Jim what's the Jim not the Jim Kerr laws, but the um back when if you couldn't or if you were jailed, you could have it was when they were trying to get get around slavery, but they still had slavery, where if you were jailed for a certain time and someone could buy out Debtor, your jail time. Prison. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, so that's like lawful evil, right? Where like they're technically still within the law. It's not good, but it's still lawful. They live by some sort of code that they won't whatever. Neutral evil is very much the like they don't go out of their way to do evil, but they'll do evil if they're in the, if you're in their way. Um, regardless. And then chaotic evil is very much the that's a cool town. That doesn't need to be a town anymore, and then just goes and fucks it up. I can agree with that. Yeah, I've I've started yeah. to look at kind of like if um like or at least the in terms of alignment, it is how selfish they are and to what degree they will go out of their way to do their alignment. Is kind of uh at least it helps me just like quickly. Yeah, no, that's good that's a good reference. Now I'm trying to work on my sound stuff. Uh, my focus on uh, between now and next year is going to be not one year, but like 2023. Get uh, my voices down better. Get my audio and uh, ambient effects stepped up. I think I might uh, might go pro next year. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, are you considering getting a <laughs> paid for it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seeing that there's a huge vacuum of of emptiness where DMs are placed. And, right. and, and I will say with the buy-in uh, in terms of like, you know, paying for sessions, you're going to show up now. <laughs> the One. Yeah. You're now more obligated to show up and, and two, you kind of call the crowd a little bit. You're probably going to get a couple like little bad apples, but it's now less likely because, you know, if they're willing to put their yep. money where their mouth is, you know, exactly. I thought you did a stellar job last week with the dwarves. Thank you. I appreciate that. I worked hard on it. <laughs> I think you did a great job. It's just we didn't do very well. <laughs> I was leaving. I, I should have made out. Bob's. I should have made Bob's voice a little bit deeper with you guys. So, you guys. Yeah. Hey, man. We all learn. Okay. We're all here. Oh, oh, God damn, dude. That, that Brooklyn accent is just like it throws me for a loop. I'm like, okay, great. Which one am I talking to now? But isn't that normally when you're talking to Jersey? I mean, to prefer, is it not normal when you're talking to dwarves? You don't really know if they're like... I will be honest with you. I have <laughs> never met anybody from Jersey. I've never oh. heard a legitimate Jersey accent. Uh, nor have I. I've met people from Jersey that don't have it. They have like that little slight tang, but like nothing like super heavy. I have an uncle from That's New insane. York. And so I know a New York accent pretty well. And then I have a I have a friend, a coworker who's from Maine, so I know a like a, a Maine North accent. Northern. Yeah. Um but that's about it. Everyone else I know is straight country. <laughs> southern? What you trying to say, man? Hey man, we got that southern hospitality down here. Yeah, we got that nice southern drawl and uh I shit you not. One of my backup characters is a is a southern bumpkin, like is a is a country bumpkin. Um, and if we didn't have so many damn sorcerers and spell slingers, I would use him. But I'm not. Hey gonna... man, you should bring bring in more spellcasters. We could always use more spellcasters. We'll see. We'll see. I, <laughs> I I really want to use him because I think he's a. I think it's a hilarious concept. But um, but yeah, I uh, I don't. Uh, I just don't know with all with as many spellcasters as there are. I mean, it just depends on uh, what you go what, what you as get down because is diversify your spells. Not you know, I mean, everybody will need everybody needs fireball. And magic everyone pistol. needs fireball. That's just the that is like the hands down most useful combat one that just right. works ninety percent of the works. time. It just works. Yeah, it's it's like just the good old. It just works. <laughs> it's a nice AOE. Everyone knows to fear it. It's it's nice. But as long as you guys diversify your spells, I mean, each caster is different, especially with there's a huge variety of casters as well. Yeah, especially because I'm. I dig the warlock because there's so that is really a diverse class. 
Um, you can never. You don't like. There's okay. Like there's good. There there are good metas for warlock, but theoretically, you you can. There's a decent possibility that you will never see the same warlock twice. So right. that so that's one of the other reasons is that I I'm dubious about using him is because he's he uh, I, I'm I've never I've never played a PC spellcaster before every oh. every everything I have ever played has always been mainly melee so I actually don't paladin. know paladin. yeah I've done a paladin I've done a paladin before well, then you should be fine on the spellcaster yeah, part. yeah it's pretty much but, the same there's some <laughs> so um. So then my, like, my question was, like, are warlocks the ones that have, like, the patron? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. They're the uh, half-caster boys. Or er, quarter-casters. They're half. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they go up to fifth, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, but they you only have... the uber spells, but you make up for it with, like, really cool powers that are equivalent. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're very much the... Wizard of the Sword and Board uh, spell boys. Not as like you know, combat focuses focuses like the Paladin, but <laughs> that's always my question. You can really players, like kind of like Nishra. I mean, I know Nishra's multi class, but with Warlock, once you get to like level five, you can just just do nothing but cast Eldritch Blast and just annihilate. And just yeah, I I always ask. I'm that really of, excited. Uh, of the, and the new players, I'm like, do you want to be really good at? Do you want to like? Do you want to win and like still be able to fuck around and like you know get into trouble, or do you want to be just good at a lot of things? <laughs> yeah, because um, there are there are classes that are very good at combat and nothing else. <laughs> if I could redo my Wednesday night character, I'd probably only give him like two levels of bard, and the rest be warlock, and I'd pretty much go like Jedi with it. Oh, just running around Hex- Hexblade? Well, yeah, Hexblade, and then um, when you get your invocations, there's one that when you hit with your Eldritch Blast, you can push them back 10 feet, and then there's another one where you can pull them forward 10 feet. So there's Force Push and Force Pull, and then you can just make your Eldritch Blast uh, really, really strong. There's your Force Lightning. Find myself a wow. Sunblade. They're only fifteen grand. Actually, they're only ten grand. <laughs> they're only ten grand, actually. Fifteen because yes. you're in port port nine. Oh, actually, that was my apologies. There are actually more than one sunblade. There, okay, there's only one sun sword. There are, as I guess, as the many as you blade, want right. sun blades. Oh, but it's so the one commonly one... known from Curtis yes, Strahd's really yeah. where it gets its name from. Yeah, this the sun sword is from Strahd. Gotcha. So the is... one. The one you picked up may not necessarily no. be the one from Strahd. It might not be. Gotcha. But that is where it's that is where it's from. They're, they're pretty, pretty much the same thing, yeah. Yeah. We should go to uh, we should go to we should go to Strahd. He's got some cool stuff over there. Oh, I love Ravenloft. <laughs> it's so good. I love Ravenloft. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be really really awkward, just like because uh, I, I know with uh, with Strahd, like you know, he likes to see the players or whatever, right? So like. First day we visit the castle, we just stomp Strahd. <laughs> <Just again. laughs> yeah. It's like end of module. Okay, cool. Let's loot this realm. <laughs> the Wednesday night group I joined right as the summer was about to end or start up. Um, we we're going to do Strahd. Actually, we we're going to do Dragon Heist. And oh, that's a fun one. That's what they say. Is it the, is it the one through four? Yeah, and. Uh, and then you get to go to Mad Mage as the sequel to it. But uh, you, isn't, that the, isn't that the Dungeon We built one, our characters up. Like, seriously, all of us had this amazing jam session. We all built our characters together. Session zero was amazing. And then the DM, literally, session one day, says, guys, we're actually going to do something different. We're going to do a different module. Because after reading this, it's just, I don't think you guys will like it. I'm like, dude, you've never played with a single one of us before. What the hell? And so, so basically, he was like, "I don't like this." Yeah, I think well, so. I, I I wonder if he thought it was going to be something different. Well, no. If he... His excuse was so he asked the group, "Like, watch your RP combat." And one person's oh. like, "I'd really like to have minimum fifty fifty, but really more combat heavy than RP." And it's it's supposedly like a twenty percent combat, 
eighty percent RP, which is fine. That's like the other person that was like wanted the combat was like, okay, that's fine with me. You know, I'm going to build a martial character, and when we go on to the next module, it'll be ready. When Mad Mage, yeah, that's when it right, right. And so, uh, so he's like, whatever, okay. So he goes, I want you guys to vote, and we're like, dude, we already voted twice before on this. So you have our number one and number two. And uh, hold on, my dog's barking. Sorry to be suspenseful, but be right back. Oh god, I fucking hate. Oh god, it's killing me. <laughs> fucking cliffhangers. <laughs> No, you should totally be a caster. Believe in you. You can just run around fireball everything. And then it just... Where? But the moment they get in range, we just get fucking slammed. <laughs> oh, you should be a blade singer. Then just you and me just running around with like... Sorry about that. He's, <laughs> he's, really, he's like 13 years old and I don't want him to feel like he's alone. When he barks, he needs to be acknowledged for his mental health. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh so anyway so yeah so we voted we were like we already voted twice you already know our top two and he's like well yeah the other one has too many factions to keep up with so that's why i didn't want to do that one we're like, okay so our number one our number two is gone what do you want to do dm what do you want to run and he's like well i don't know any of them are fine but like obviously not because you just vetoed two of them and uh so we've settled on curse of strahd right we build a trio of paladins, um, and then Fool. one guy was a gloom. Yeah. <laughs> a trio Fool. of paladins and a gloom. Oh no, no, not sorry, not paladins, clerics. Three different Fool. types of clerics. That's, the, that's an easy run. <laughs> and then one of them was a gloom stalker ranger, and like Jesus. one was a twilight cleric. I was a cleric of life, and the other one was a cleric of light. And it was oh, very, that... we did very, very RP with it. We weren't trying to go OP. We we're just trying to go very RP. Yeah, but that, yeah, but that party is OP though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we knew we were getting a Strahd, so we at least had to have one cleric, one paladin. We all chose clerics. Minimal one cleric. Everyone chose a cleric. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. All right. <laughs> uh, it was, it was so fun though. And so our first session went really, really good, except for the face that like fact that like my face literally got graded by ghouls the entire time. First time, I'm like, I'm a cleric. And I'm getting like annihilated by ghouls, but whatever. The DM, the DM wasn't that good at uh, revealing things. Like he'd let us walk around. He's like, "Go ahead and walk around." And so I just walk one square at a time. And then I come up to a corner, and I'd be like, "Stop!" And I was like, "Is anything happening? Do I hear anything?" He's like, "No." I take one more step forward. And he goes, "Okay, roll initiative." I was like, "For what?" He goes, "Because four ghouls see you now." I was like, "I really couldn't peek my head around the <sighs> yeah, corner there should as been a cleric a per- looking perception for perception check there." Yeah. Right. I would have I would have been okay if I failed a perception check or even if it's like my passive perception failed, but my passive was like 14. So there's, right. there's no yeah. reason and to miss aren't... ghouls yeah. hobbling around the corridor on patrol. So long story short, oh wait, no, long story longer. Um session two, he calls out sick. Session three, two of the other people call out sick. Session four, because we they've all been canceled. So these are the greatest PPG of two. all. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get there, <laughs> and the other couple's like, the other couple's like, uh, there's a couple playing, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're about to have a baby, so we're really not going to get to play much this month. Um, so once things settle down with our our kid, I was like, is this your first kid? They're like, yeah. I was like, okay, we're not seeing you guys again. We're not seeing <laughs> you guys. Again. Yep, that's about right. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, bye. And then the DM very next week, he's like, yeah, guys, I need to take about a two or three week break to really kind of get things together. I was like, bro, you've had a fucking two months of wasting my also, time. It's- it's Strahd. There's nothing Wait, to put together. There's, it's there's no, all you gotta you. do is all you gotta do is just take a whole bunch of undead and throw them at us, and it's fine. Exactly. What uh, what, uh, what 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 platform are you guys playing on? It was, I think, it was on roll twenty. Yeah. Did he buy the module? Oh my yeah, god! He owned, he owned all of them. But then, I, he, then everything what? is prepped for him. He had nothing. Then he has he nothing. Had to nothing to, he literally yeah. had. He was like John. Owned everything. Owned everything. Oh no, we, not uh, maybe his D and D Beyond. No, I mean still, even if he bought One the D and D Beyond, he bought every he bought everything. He had t- all the materials. Yeah, so see, that's that's yeah. the thing. Like, it's not like he's running out of a DM, book in his house. Is I was like, I just don't like the prep. I don't like the uh, yeah. 
don't like having to take time out of my day, out of my work day. I just want to relax. Yeah, fair, yeah. fair. And I enjoy um, doing that though. Like, but at the, the same time, the though, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, though, with um, with Strahd, that is because I, I got to read over the module after after I finished the campaign. And I'm like, oh wow, a lot of this stuff is covered. Like all your See, story points, like everything's mm-hmm. almost yeah, like. It's, we got into the house and I was like that very first house where there's like the two house? dead kids or whatever. Yeah, the death house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with like a we got down to the basement and like the whole entire time I'm like I'm going in the house. I was like those kids were dead. I know they are. It's just I can tell. It's like there's no gray area on. I was like those kids are dead. Their souls are in here somewhere. Their bodies are somewhere. Or something is keeping them attached. Mm-hmm. I was like so let's go to the basement. And he wouldn't let us go straight to the basement, even though I found the basement very first like 10 seconds of being in there he goes no it won't open blah 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 he wanted us to go all the way to the top and then all the way to the bottom that's right but yeah exactly (laughs) i really you know i only railroaded you guys maybe 30 percent of the time in tomb (laughs) to be fair we are very very chaotic like (laughs) which is right which is which is i think 30 percent is not a lot that's not that um no, it's not bad. I know I know a lot of DMs go like 75% railroading and you just go along for the ride. Right. Which it can, which good ones can make it really fun. Right. The good but ones doesn't it it won't look like you're doing it. Yeah. When you guys started when you guys were like about to take a straight northern shot through Omu when you guys were like five tiles north of Omu. I mean, yeah, north of Omu and you guys were about to head like straight up north towards the coast. I was like, okay, I kind of got a I need to stir you guys around a little bit because, like, the death curse is going to kill everybody by this point. And it just redirected you a little bit with a fun side quest, hit you up with some goblins telling you about Moa, and right. Well, then, and then you guys made it there within like another session. You guys were there, so it's just like a little redirection. Well, and for a for a time sensitive module like Tomb of Annihilation, right. they, we took a uh, time. Yeah, <laughs> a, a certain amount of railroading is yeah, expected. Yeah. Right. Because, so. I mean, by the end of the module, the entire continent of Cholt can potentially be gone. I mean, just wiped out. Yeah, well, especially I mean, with Ross and C getting, getting pretty close to summoning his stuff. Summoning and, the grab, yeah. right? You know, it's um, it's interesting. Um, when I did DM, the first skill set I learned was the fake railroading or the always railroading, where if you want the players to go somewhere, right? They don't go there and they go somewhere else. You just move what you just prepared. What is, yeah, I just did right for, in front of yeah. them. Like, yep, cool. Yep, yep. yep. You were going here the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's why I got to be careful with which maps of Cholt I show you guys. Because, like, if you compare yours to the real one, there's some things shifted around. Not too bad. But I was like, oh, this place is really, really cool. And you guys should get to experience this place. It's not. I mean, oh, yeah. Annihilation did so much prep work. Like, they gave us so much already done. But, like. Mm-hmm. They even say at the end that like you're gonna have to spend a lot of time preparing, and they put out a 50 page hardcover compendium to help cover things they didn't. Oh, like and, in the and tomb? that still didn't even cover it all. <laughs> so, jeez, yeah. See, I, I wish keep... no, not even in the tomb. It's outside the tomb. Oh, so. yeah. I wish I'd learned that skill a long time ago. The the whole fake railroading thing because it would have saved me so much heartache with uh, Storm King's Thunder. Like I did exactly like what your dm did and i bought the module on roll 20 i had it like literally you buy the module you've got everything you need. You have like, everything you need yeah it doesn't no excuse yeah. whatsoever yeah but so like my players got through with um the attack on uh mirabar and like after that they all decided like they they liked other elements of the story than what was going on with the giants and stuff and i was just like Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I'm focusing on this then. Eventually, that that is the campaign that went from turn that turned from Storm King's Thunder, all about the giants, to they fought Tiamat at the end of the campaign. Huh? See, because that's what a DM should do it should take let the players go on yeah, an adventure that interests right. them. But that ba- but that was also a really good lesson for me too because it like it threw me to the wolves like I bought I bought that module <laughs> and I was like I have everything prepared for me I don't have to like I can enjoy this along with them nope the the like like the weeks that it took for us to narrow down a game because it, we all live in different <laughs> time zones I was spent creating 
everything from scratch, but I learned so much about how, how being a DM, DM works. So yeah. it was I've, it was a fantastic game, and it was a, one of my it's my longest running one so far. That's you awesome. still running it right now? Is it still going on? No, we actually ended it last uh, last year was when the oh. was when the last fight was. I thought about messaging, and we've a lot of us have moved have like moved on in our lives so we've all kind of lost touch a little bit we we poke right. our heads in the discord every now and then but i thought i i honestly thought about doing like a i guess like a homecoming like see what happened after yeah. you know after a year and where your characters oh, are at kind of fun. came so dude honestly that's what we did for christmas Drawn. um we did our last session was extra long because after we defeated Strahd, he did like an extra like three hours of like what happens afterwards. What are you guys going to yeah. do? Well, um, and they all expressed like after we got done with that game, I think that game ended up being a four or five hour long game. We started it. We started it first thing in the morning, which we typically didn't. We typically had to do because one of our one of my players lived in the UK. So oh, yeah. she she, you know, had we had to do it first thing in the morning for us so that she had plenty of time to play. Right. And um but that one ended up turning into a like four or five hour long game yeah. and she like she stayed up. She was in love with it. She loved but they were all like, Well, what happens next? There's so many unanswered questions. I was like, Well, you know, we'll have to put together another game and find out. But um that was a year ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. hey, I, I've already put it on the table. What this looks is if you need anything like cash or otherwise, I will be happy to fund my forever DM. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so that's so kind and polite, guys. Um, no, I I just this is really an enjoyable group. I look forward to this. Okay, I spend too much free time on it. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> But no, I, I really, it's it's a highlight. And you guys are such a great group. The whole entire group is just really top notch. So it like, it makes it fun. Everyone's mm-hmm. got their own attributes that really add to the dynamic of the group. And it's just, we're all real well balanced. And, you know, I always bring crackers because you guys have a lot of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, um, that's why I always play high intelligence, man. I get to use my <laughs> brain goals. And yeah. just, I'm like, I'm like, huh. That wording is awfully weird, and if it was interpreted in this way, yeah. hey, this lunch is gonna go do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, it sounds like you guys have played several of the major modules. So, have you guys played Out of the Abyss? Uh, I have did. played Out of the Abyss for two sessions, and oh, then okay. the uh, and then it broke apart. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> have you guys played Horde of the Dragon Queen? I, no. I have both of those books beside me and I have read them. So, Oh, okay. I think cool. I've done Fandelver. Uh, I've done Strahd. Fandelver. I, think I have hit. Yeah, you said Storm King's Thunder. You yeah, ran. I ran Storm King's Thunder. Like I said, I, we only got to the, to the Battle of Mirabar, which mm-hmm. is like game three or four. And yeah. then they were just like, "Ooh, look, something shiny." That was when my uh, that was when my char- one of my characters, one of my players, discovered what the win- ring of winter was, and she Ooh. was became obsessed with it. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh God, this is going to turn into Tomb of Annihilation." In fact, Tomb of Annihilation. When she found out about that, Tomb of Annihilation had just come out, so oh, I yeah. had I had to look into what where Artemis Simber and all that was. Over. Yeah, yeah, it actually, would have been a wonderful lead into it. Actually, it what's great about Storm King's Thunder is it's actually got two really good lead-ins to two other really good. Uh, Ice Wind, uh, right? Yeah, Ice Wind, Rime of the Frost. Have you read Maiden that is, one? I yes, I have that book too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, 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 I am no, a book, really good book hoarder. I'm a book hoarder, so I have I have literally just about every book beside me. I actually don't have um, what was the one you're playing? Tomb. No, not uh, the um. Oh, the uh. uh Abyssal uh, Waterdeep. Oh, uh, uh, Dragon, Heist. Dragon Heist. Yeah, Dragon Heist. I I don't I actually don't have Dragon Heist, so I don't have that one, and I have don't have the one read that all leads these books? into. 
Um, do you? No, no. A better question. Do you remember these books? I think you remember really want, really that is going to be yeah. So no, I do not remember everything in these books. Okay. What about Princes no. of the Apocalypse? I have not played Princes of the Apocalypse. I do not own that book. Descent into Avernus. I do not have that one or read it. Cool. <laughs> very specific. Very specific. Kishar. I'm no, actually. Lives, I'm listening off the look, Out of the Abyss, Horde of the Dragon Queen, and Rise of Tiamat. Nope, nope. Tomb of Annihilation and Storm King's Thunder. I've done. To- I've, ooh, I've done a uh, Tomb of Annihilation. I've done that oh. one. Oh, good. <laughs> In fact, John actually started us. Unfortunately, John started us three years ahead of when we are supposed to be. But what? oh, really? Yeah, Tomb of Annihilation is in 1490, and he started us off in 1492 or 1493. Well, that's when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, man. Say what? 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck Columbus, that guy's a piece of shit. Yeah, he's an absolute... Um, So then there's Princes of the Apocalypse, then there's Icewind Dale, and Rime of the Frostmaiden, and Waterdeep Dragon Heist takes time, same time as in it as well, and then Descent into Avernus... And then there's a couple other that come after that, but that's no. like the most popular, well-written, um, high-rated ones. Oh, out of curiosity, just Lexi's. Uh, now that we're kind yeah. of more off the rails, do you give your tokens money? Like your uh, character tokens? Most of them, yeah. You really? Okay, good, 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 good. Can no, we loot them? No, 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 yeah. no, no. I, ha- I have a macro that's checking for something. Oh, gotcha. I need to start. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't get. Don't worry, Lexi's. I'll know. I'll know if you're if you add the forbidden coin. <laughs> the forbidden coin. Forbidden coin. What the hell oh, is that? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep. Uh, I have a macro that checks all the tokens was, on the page for Electrum. I was. Oh. Actually, <laughs> I was actually thinking about like making Electrum like the most valuable currency now. Like there's a I whole economic change. I would upset. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna change all of my money in my pockets to Electrum, and like no. that way, every time you check, no. there it is. There's Lyra's money. There it is. <laughs> no, don't do, don't do that. <laughs> it's actually that's the best part, though. I'm not checking players. I'm only checking everybody else. Ah. <laughs> I'm vibe that's checking cool. uh, dyslexias. <laughs> yeah. When uh, when you when when we kind of sat down that that night after the game and we all kind of uh, theory crafted what we thought was going on, um, I kind of started like thinking, oh, you know what? Like a lot of this is stuff that I've either looked into and played before. So mm-hmm. ever since then, I've been like abstaining from touching my books. Thank you. I, for like, doing that. If it, yeah, like I don't want to like Tomb of Annihilation. I didn't know too much about, even though I own the book. Um, so that one was good. But uh, some of these other books I I had read back when they were relevant to what I was doing, like Curse of Strahd. I know Strahd. Um, I think just about anybody who's played D&D has done Strahd at some point. Yeah. But, Except uh, for me, because I've only gotten one session in. <laughs> we need to do a Strahd game. That would be fun. I might, I might hire you guys to be a D&D uh, DM for me one time. Oh, God. That'd, That'd be, be fun. fun. <laughs> Wait, you know what? Might do a mini session, only so I can get back at this lecture. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> what are all these tokens doing here, buddy? These are actually these are merchants that used to be on page one. Uh, who is uh, Marlena? Marlena? Yeah, who's that one? Want to point it out for me? <laughs> they have Electrum. <laughs> yep, they sure do. <laughs> they sure do. Why is there a token named Iwick? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? He's, he's a cat as well. He I is. A fox thing, like a fox cat thing. I like it. <laughs> I love that picture. It's just... Awesome. <laughs> it's like, welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we can. Uh, yeah, tonight you guys will be finding out more of the timeline and history of stuff. If you guys so probe into the certain events that happen tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, gives you kind of more of an idea of. You guys have heard all sorts of rumors of like hell breaking loose all over, but like. Find out what's real, what's rumor, kind of thing. I mean, hey, as lectures, you know, now that we're kind of off the module, if you want to turn back the clock year wise to more set it up for the overall thing, now would be the time. Yeah, I already went and modified my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, now would be, is, is now lot, would be the time. It's a lot turn easier back, for yeah. me just to push everything up a couple of years and then be like, okay, well, Out of the Abyss happened in 1485 and Tomb of Annihilation was supposed to happen in 1490. So now we're just kind of 
Oh, so you literally just pushed the... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I just pushed everything up two years. Okay. You know, they say that the Dark Ages is actually just... There were two people that... Two rulers that wanted to live forever. Mm -hmm. And so they just advanced the clock a thousand years. They didn't even... They just just wrote a new calendar and said, Okay, it starts at this date now. We lived a thousand years. See ya. (laughs) I like it. Wow. And so it's that's tenacious. what they think might be the dark ages was there really was no gap. There's maybe like 10 years of gap. And, hmm. uh, and otherwise it's all fabricated by these two. So what you're saying is they use the wish to move all the calendars forward a thousand years. Cause they're trolls. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Sounds like a good use of a incredibly rare spell. Okay. Let's be honest. Like, so the first wish, right? will always be something like pertinent like oh i wish i was back the second wish that's when the cheese and the troll and the, yeah. like the yeah. giddy of like let's have some fun yeah i wish i wish all unicorns now had dicks on their heads instead of horns <laughs> right no no see what you do i, and I, 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 love I do that and then instantly turn you into unicorn as well <laughs> <laughs> I love the post. It was like, uh, do you guys know what the um, Untitled Goose Game is? Yeah. It no. was uh, It was that, right? It was, uh, uh, I think it was like, it was referencing Shenron from Dragon Ball. And oh, it's like, nice. You see, you, see, you see the goose walk up to Shenron. And it's like, state your wish. You know, Hong. it's like, your wish has been granted. <laughs> nothing, noticeably, nothing visually no- noticeable happens. This worries you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a. I saw someone wrote a someone wrote a program that would you install it. And I thought about doing this on some of our users that really pissed me off at work. Oh, the desktop you, goose. Yeah, the desktop goose. Have you seen that? <laughs> I love the yeah. desktop goose. Such a meme. Yep. <laughs> it's tempting. I have the power to yeah. do it. It's tempting. Yeah, so do I. I can push it out to every single one of the users in our company and get fired. <laughs> I don't know what this happened, but there's a breach in our... Uh, oh, yeah. Huge security on. breach. No idea. You guys are so much braver than I am. I couldn't I couldn't hang in IT. I did it for almost a full year, and it was God. it was brutal. Was it all it was like brutal. help desk, service desk? Mostly. It was IT for Sears Home Improvement Call Center. Yeah, see, no, no, no. Oh, bless you, your you, heart. Do, you do your, you do your, like, couple months, you get your certs, and you get the fuck out. Yeah. <sighs> I could It is not. I, like, don't remember, I love IT. I love doing IT. It's the users. <laughs> it's, it's, no, exactly. <laughs> see, that's why they, I, like, oh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that's why I became a sysadmin, so I don't have to deal with the fucking users. Right. Hey man, I went data engineer. Was, like it, I, I, I peeled out. I, <laughs> I didn't find you. It started with like the users out. of like basic, like like that old British show. It is your computer on? Okay, there you go. Is your monitor oh, on? Is your computer machine. plugged in? Have, have you turned it off? Turned it back on. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And it, you know it's kind of funny because it is amazing how much just restarting your stuff will fix everything. But then I moved into two more of um having to filter all the porn that they were looking up. <laughs> and then the company was mad that they were losing time on the internet in general. Like, okay, we got the, we got the sys blocks up so they don't, they don't look at unwanted things. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, okay, they want the internet shut down completely aside from just running with the programs for setting up their calls and stuff. Like, okay, fine. <sighs> the trickiest motherfuckers out there. Oh, we allowed calculator up there. They had to use calculator. They opened a calculator, then they went to the help, and then they got the extra. They clicked on the extra help button that actually sends them onto to the Microsoft web page to. Mm-hmm. But it's in, still inside of calculator. You guys know what I'm talking about. That's how they access the internet. It took us like three weeks to figure out how they're still getting on the internet. Well, see, so you know, that was, was like, your really, first problem. Your first problem was if you lock it down there, you have to lock it. Just lock it down on the network side, and it doesn't matter how they get there. You block out everything except for the uh, the stuff they use, and then it doesn't matter how they get on. It was... So we'd have to do that just for a set number of computers, because then the, oh, the managers problem. had to have... Right, the managers still had to have their stuff open, and those were, that was just middle management. So it was just... They were still on the same network as the other doofuses. So <laughs> they wouldn't let us open up another server. That would be... I mean, God, we have so much money and so many servers. I hear crooked crying internally it was here from here it was just it was just stupid i was over it yeah no the, the first 
I did like six months. Probably, I probably actually less than that. And uh, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so uh, I went. <laughs> yeah. And so he went to teaching. The, the, the death. Actually, the death. actually, I went and did fire equipment. And, uh, you know, the suppression hood systems for restaurants and then checking oh. fire extinguishers at schools and buildings. That was really good. Money. Actually, what got you into education? Like, you sound like you went like really like hard left a couple times to get. Oh, man. I have. So backtrack to 10 years old. My grandfather was like my hero. Looking back now, he's still kind of an asshole. But at, that, <laughs> <laughs> at 10 years old, he was like everything. He'd always tell me all these stories. And he lived this adventurous, exciting life. He, he'd done so much and and he had receipts for most of it. And I was like, man, that's so cool. I really want to experience a full life as well. So when he died, uh, kind of dark here, but in my arms at 12, I was like, okay, I'm going to carry on this legacy and I'm going to live the most full life I can experience as much as I can. And that was the journey, man. So I was a children's pastor. I went and got ordained at 16, did that for several years. Um, then I really started and I'm sorry if anyone's religious, but I really started reading. And once I got done with my ordination, I started going into what's called New and Old Testament surveys, which you really have to do some deep dives. I lost my faith. Um, so then I went and did hotel management. I actually started off as construction for this Renaissance hotel by Marriott. I mean, starting from the cement up, built this thing over the course of a year. And then they asked me to stay on as maintenance. I was like, yeah, sounds great. So I went from maintenance and I went, I was like, oh, I want to try house cleaning. So I did house cleaning and then they moved me up to management. And so then I ran uh, evening management for the hotel. Got to see a whole bunch of celebrities come through. And then I was like, mm, time to join the army. Let's do it. <laughs> wow. It's like, she's like, yeah, fuck management. I want to be part of management. Management sucks. <laughs> and <it> just dips. <laughs> and the funniest thing was I had like 13 different piercings in and, uh, oh, shit. up until the hotel job i had like my hair dyed all sorts of colors i was like punker than your mother man and took it all i just 180 it shaved my head took out all the piercings joined the army came a combat medic um did two years there got injured got out and moved to florida for i lived in oklahoma most of my life moved hey, that's to old that's old man town though Exactly. I was trying to reconnect. I was right, tr trying to reconnect my dad. He left us when we were young, and I was like, "Okay, let me try to forgive him." And so moved out there to meet with him. And then uh, his husband worked for Sears IT. And after I was working like three crappy jobs, um, they got me in there. And I was like, "All right, cool, cool, cool." And I was like, "No, nah, this sucks. <laughs> um, this, this sucks bad." Yeah, turn, so, turn burn on that shit's pretty high. So my my at the time my roommate's girlfriend uh, hooked it up with uh, a job at her family's company doing the fire extinguisher stuff. Did that until uh, I got married to my first wife. Then I moved to Hawkinsville, Georgia, and uh, ended up working in the Walmart meat department. Um, which was just, uh, just kind of a out there job. I was like, okay, I need a job. <laughs> There's nothing in this town. And so I worked at the Walmart, moved to Night Stalker. Dude, that was probably one of my favorite jobs is working at Walmart. I did get one ride up there though and got the nickname Kung Fu Panda <laughs> because we were working late one night. It's still when I was in the meat department and I'd go hang out with the guys in produce because I'd knock my job out fast and, and, that's just how I work. I just get it done and get it over with. And uh, I'm over there in the meat department. I mean, the produce department. And they have to cut the fruit open one piece out of every box to make sure the fruit is good. And the guy had his whole stack of fruit there. And I was like, can I cut these open? He's like, sure. So I grabbed the scimitar. Yes, it was a scimitar. It was awesome. <laughs> and I just started throwing the fruit up in the air and then slicing it in half and letting it fall into the trash can. And I was having so much fun doing that. I forgot to clean the knife off completely. And so there's still a little bit of like uh, papaya or some shit on there. And I put it back on the wall. The very next day they get health inspected and Damn. they get marked down a point for that. Oh no. So they, they pull the tape to see who does it. They call me in the office and, and Mark, he was a real, he's a, he's a great guy, but <laughs> he's like, man, I have to write you up. I was like, Oh no, what I do? He goes, come on in my office and up on his like five, 
monitors is me in different like acts of swinging, <laughs> cutting this watermelon in half in midair. And you know, I'm in the meat department, so I'm wearing my blue, but it's in black and white. So I'm wearing like a blue Walmart shirt and a giant white lab coat. So I look like I'm like black and white. And he's like, all right, Kung Fu Panda, man. I'm going to have to write you up for this. Um, he's like, it just means you can't move up to management for another six months. I was like, yeah, no problem, whatever. And I wanted to be a chef my entire life. When I was 13, right before my you know, dad bounced, um, he would bounced like 15. So at 13, I met one of his his boyfriends was the freaking personal chef for the Prince of Morocco. Whoa. This huh. dude. Yeah, right. This dude would throw down. And it was just so cool to hear his stories, meeting celebrities. And just like, I loved food. I've been a fat kid my whole life. So like food, win, money, yes. Um, so I always want to be one, but my parents said, no, you're going into religion and computers. I was like, okay. Jeez. So here I am out on my own and I'm, I'm not going anywhere with Walmart. It's, it's, it it's is Walmart. what it is. Come on now. And I was an hour and a half, two hours away from Atlanta and they had the Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts up there. So I was like, oh, let me use my GI bill from the army and let's go do that. Um, and so went to culinary school, graduated, um, went on some double dates with, uh, who is now my current wife and her husband. And uh, uh, ended up going out to California, working at some of the best places. I got to cook for the Lakers, the the Rams. Just I've cooked for professionals. I cooked for the Clintons. So I got to do do it all, man. I worked at the one of the best restaurants in California. Made my way. Had to move back to Atlanta because we had a house. It wasn't selling. The mark it was two thousand eight when my wife bought the house in 2010 uh, damn. the market yeah everybody says yeah. It. <laughs> ah, we all know. that time <laughs> um, yeah so we had to move back because we were renting it out to people did you uh, mean now we're renting out to section eight because we <laughs> felt we were like yes these people deserve a chance no they're using our garage door opener as a kitty ride they'd hold on to the garage door and just press the button up and down up and down so they'd ride on it and so we had to go back and take care of the house fix it uh one night, my uh, my dog is like barking crazy. I'm like, "What is going on?" I never heard this bark from him in my life. And I'm upstairs in my boxers, nothing else. And my wife looks out the window and she goes, "There's somebody outside." And I'm downstairs as soon as she said, "There's somebody," and there's this dude swinging a pole at my dog. Oh, you bought to get oh. shot, son! Oh God, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, my yard it was about an acre. It was a really big yard, about and. Uh, were you on the back of the wooden the jungle? The uh, they were. He was like in the middle of the property. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and but it's all overgrown because it's like I don't know if you know anything about kudzu, but it's a bitch. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are vines everywhere. The trees were pretty well grown. The thickets. Well, I had three dogs, so they've run their trails. I know which what their trails are. So this guy takes off, and I take off after him. My wife is like, I've never seen a 300 pound man move that fast in my life. <laughs> I actually beat him to the fence. Now, since we had left and come back, there had actually been uh, been eight foot tall fences with razor wire, like prison wire Fuck. across the top of them built behind us because they built the projects there. Yeah. I beat him back to the, I, I literally beat him to the fence and I literally beat him with that pole at the fence. <laughs> and all Hannah heard was just smack, smack. Ah, and she's like, well, it's not my husband screaming, so he's okay. <laughs> so she went back to bed. Yeah, yeah. And so I threw, I threw him over the, I threw him over the fence. He got caught on the wire. So he's beat, sliced up. And I was like, don't come back here. But guess what? He came back with his friends. And they had weapons. And so I just see them. They're all standing in my backyard. And I was like, I just give them a head nod. And I shut the door and lock it. And I sleep by the door with a gun. <laughs> Very next day. I, oh, that night I'd called their, her parents. I said, hey, we're coming up tomorrow. Um, and they said, okay, we're coming down tomorrow. And they drove down from Michigan. And I had a truck. And I packed our entire 2,000 square foot home in less than 24 hours. Got in a truck and got us out of there. Fuck. Ended up in Michigan. So now we're living with our parents, which is like, yay. Um, but it's very nice. I'm so grateful that they let us do that because it got us out of a very dangerous situation. And uh Damn. oh so right, right, right. Michigan. I'm like, I'm like, wait, fuck dude, castle law, they're on your property. It doesn't matter how far they 
<laughs> things, yeah, things tech, tech, will fall tech, on the property. There's no one to lose. <laughs> yeah, but down in Georgia, he could have dropped everybody on the lot, and they. Oh would yeah, have just yeah, kept no, coming. no. The yeah, yeah if you yeah. were on property, as long as they're on property, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I could have dropped them, but like literally, it was like literally gang members and yeah. like there's there as they just like you said they'd keep on showing up and yeah, showing up and, and they won't be nice about it and then just show up and say hey we're here motherfucker they yeah, would just show the, up and with the automatic yeah. weapons and they, hose the house yeah exactly exactly gotcha. they showed up the first time as a courtesy but a good showing of force and i took the hint um so yeah we ended up in michigan and um so i went and took a job at like the worst restaurant i've ever worked at in my life but it's really fun because I've got so many gross stories like from this restaurant that I tell my kids that I now teach about how bad this restaurant is. Um, so my sister-in-law, Hannah is my wife. Her sister gets a job as a choir director in this small podunk town in Michigan called Owasso. They ask her what she likes to do. And she's like, oh, I love cooking with my sister. That's really one of my favorite hobbies. She's a chef. And they're like, no shit. We're about to shut the culinary program down. Give us a call. My wife calls. They wine dine and take her to the uh, straight to the HR. And they're like, here's steak dinner. Here's big glasses of wine. And here's a $45,000 annual salary contract. And she signed it sight unseen. And uh, I continued doing like catering stuff on the side and volunteered up there. Cause I've always, I've always loved kids. I've worked with kids, children's pastor, all that stuff. And, uh, they ended up hiring me on five years ago, and I, I was a parapro. I am a parapro, so I work mostly with the special needs population, and uh, here I am working in culinary as an educator with my wife, and that's how we got into education. <laughs> that was a real long way to get to. <laughs> long story short, short from more, uh, where I started listening to all this, Red gang members became a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'll tell you what i'll uh i'll uh craig's already been recording so i'll replay that part for you <laughs> if you guys want some juicy sauce i'll tell you about how my wife and i got together but that's for another day another time because it's time for a recap so 